Hey everyone, my name is Vel here at Science Away, and welcome back. Today, we're gonna be doing a experiment or a kit, and we're gonna be breaking open some geodes. Now, if you don't know what a geode is, and I have one open right here, because I wanted to make sure how th this works. A geode is basically some crystals that are formed inside of a rock. So hopefully you can see this when I'm on screen. There we go, now I am. <laughs> So yeah, so I've already bro broken open one to see how it works since I've never done this before. Well, well I have now that I've broken open one. And we're just gonna be breaking open some geodes. Now there's a total of 10 and the one I have from National Geographic. And I'll pull this up so you all can see it. So we have 10 premium, premium, premium quality geodes, one informative guide, two display stands which are being used right here. One, a pair of safety goggles, which is really nice because usually in these kits they don't come with safety goggles. I usually have to have my own. So since there already is one and I have been using it since, we're going to go ahead and use that. Now what it does not come with that you do need is you're going to need a hammer. Now this is a small hammer, it's not like a really big hammer. I'm not sure if this was, I've had this for years, so I'm not sure if this is a kid's hammer, you know? It's not like one of those fake hammers that kids use to push in some plastic uh, nails into some plastic wood. It's an actual hammer, it's real, it's heavy and everything. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if it's like, you know, a mini hammer for kids to use, but either way, this is a nice small hammer. I, you can't use a big hammer, I just like using this one because it's smaller. And you may or may not need these. Now, I have these from the archaeological digs that I've had in the past, but the, the way I broke open this one, I did use this in a combination with the back of the head right here of the hammer, but you may not need these. You may just only need the back parts. And just so you know, there is going to be a lot of noise when you hit these rocks. So. I do recommend you have a parent watch you, not just because of the noise, it's not about the noise, it's about the whole thing of you're going to be hitting a rock. So you have to be really careful with this, and there, you, there is an age on here, I believe. Well, it's probably, yeah, so ages 8 and up, even if it does say ages 8 and up, oh, that was the back, this is the front, I believe. <laughs> So even though it says age is eaten up, I still recommend that you have a parent watch you and possibly help you break open your geodes. But like I said, since it is gonna be really noisy, try to do it maybe on a weekend. You know, if you have a work at home parent who maybe needs to make, make a lot of phone calls or is on video chats, this can be really noisy. So be aware of that. And if you live in an apartment and there's people next to you or above you or underneath you, it, they might be able to hear it. So try to find a quiet place or maybe a certain time where you can just, you know, hit some rocks and not have to worry about the noise. And I really do recommend safety goggles because the rocks can go flying. Also, you can see down here I have a towel. That's because there will be some dust. So because there will be some dust, I recommend putting a towel down. You can use some newspapers. I just like using a towel better since you can reuse it and there's no chance of it really tearing for whatever reason. And then since they will go flying a little bit and this is a really small table, I recommend maybe putting some stuff down on the floor as well. So that way if something does hit the floor, it does not scratch your floors. I have a carpet under my desk. Well, a rug, I should say. It's a rug on my desk. So anything that falls will hit the carpet, the rug I mean, before it hits the wood floor that's underneath it. Sometimes it can still go flying. There isn't really a high chance of anything scratching it. It's just in case. So please keep that in mind. And without further ado, let's go ahead and open this. Now, I am going to walk you through how to open it, but then after that, it will be a time lapse. Since this actually does take a while, it's not that fast. My archaeological dig video, which may or may not out by the time you see this, only took me an hour or so. Keep in mind, that was my first time doing one. It might have been my, I want to say sixth one or so for the dinosaurs, maybe more. But this one may take a little longer. Especially since I've only broken one geode, I've not done the amount of archaeological digs that I have, if, you know, if you compare it. So it's going to take a little while, so be patient. And you do want to be a little careful because you don't want to, you know, break it into many, many pieces. If, you're, if you can see this up here, if you're wondering what that is, that's just the little parts that were loose inside of the rocks. So here we have a learning guide, but then we also have a translation guide. So. People who maybe don't speak English, you can still learn along. Oop. And I forgot those in here. This is guides and tips. So we're gonna look at this. Oh, this is not in is this in English? Yes. 
So this is the instructions. This right here I was drawing, this is more so, you know, what are geodes, how do they form, and what's the difference between this kind of geode and this other kind. So this is really informational. All right, so before we get started into breaking open geodes now, technically I'm recording this backwards. I just finished recording the video of breaking open these geodes. So you will be seeing how I broke open these geodes a little in a, in a second here, basically. But I want to read inside the kit. It explains what geodes are and how they're formed. So what are geodes? And there's a little manual here that comes with the kit that I have. And there's also one for the different languages. All right, so, perhaps the most fascinating of all rock formations, geodes are typically hollow, which is right here. Rounded rocks in which beautiful crystals have formed. The, the crystals grow toward the center of the cavity over millions of years, gradually forming a glittery, glitter, glitterly lining. Usually the crystals are quartz, and here we go trying to pronounce this, cal, cal, Calcite, C-A-L-C-I-T-E. Let me know if I'm saying it wrong in the comments below and how I'm supposed to say it, or fluorite. But sometimes other minerals are found. Geodes are, typic are typically have a hard outer shell made of, here we go again, let me know if I said it wrong. Chalc, <laughs> I can't even say it. I'm not even gonna try. C-H-A-L-C-E-D-O-N-Y. Let me know how to say it in the comments below. I'm totally gonna butcher it or wavy quartz that protects the crystals inside from erosion. They usually range from 1 to 12 inches in diameter, though some enormous geodes have been found. In 2000, a geode measuring 26 feet long and 6 feet across was found in an old silver mine in Spain. And let's see, cool science fact. These spear-shaped these spear rocks get their name from the Greek words for earth Oh, sorry, from the Greek words for shape of the earth. They may look like ordinary rocks on the outside, but you never know what glorious beauty awaits within a geode until you crack it open, which we have done, which will come after I read this. <laughs> and then of course, how are geodes formed? The basic requirement for the formation of a geode is the presence of a hollow or cavity in the surrounding rock. This is most common in volcanic rock, where such holes often occur, occur, occur blah, excuse me, because gases become trapped within lava as it cools. Groundwater within the surrounding rock seeps into these holes, carrying dissolved minerals, including silica. The geos begin to form when a layer of silica builds up on the inside wall of the cavity. The silica eventually turns into the that's that word again, C-H-A-L-C-E-D-O-N-Y, layer that protects the crystals inside. As more groundwater seeps into the cavity, it disposes layer upon layer of minerals, which form the inward growing crystals we see today. Because the cavity is hollow, perfectly formed crystals can often be found inside geodes. The formation of a geode with large crystals inside may take hundreds of millions of years. So there are different, there's some more information here, but I'm not going to read everything that's in here because I want you all to find out for yourselves. But one thing I do want to discuss because I didn't know this, and I thought it was quite interesting, is geodes versus, I'm, let's see how I say this, nodes? No, I, I'm not even sure how to pronounce this word. Please let me know in the comments below again. N-O-D-U-L-E-S. I want to say nodules, nodules. Not every, not every hollow that fills with crystals is a geode. A geode in which the cavity is completely filled is technically called a nodule. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna say nodule, I could be wrong though. Often a nodule is filled with small, compact crystals, crystal formations such as agitate, <laughs> agitate, jasper, or is that word again? Chalcedony. Nope, that's probably not it. <laughs> Which makes beautiful wavy patterns of many colors. The only difference between a geode and a nodule is that geode is hollow and a nodule is solid. Agitate filled no nodules are also sometimes called thunder eggs. How awesome of a name is that? Thunder eggs. Sometimes crystals of one mineral, usually quartz, will form in a vein of a different kind of rock. These crystal lined pockets are called vugs, really? getting their name from an old Cornish word meaning cave. So 
like this basically. That's not hollow, but this is. So just reference. This is hollow. That's technically not hollow per se. So it just means that where I cracked it, the crystals were forming against here. So it is, it's, hollow, it's more hollow here than it is here technically, but it's not solid. Like there is a bunch of holes here and here, here. So this technically is not an, a nodule because it's not solid. There's plenty of holes in here, but it looks close. And if you took, if you look at geodes on Google, you'll see so many amazing types of geodes. I mean, look at some of the pictures in here. Now, I don't know if we'll get to see all these different ones in my kit, but just think about that. Look how beautiful they all are. And of course we have different types of geodes. So we have, I'm not gonna read the information on here because I want you all to do some reading when you get your kit. So we have, we have, oh, is that agate? Or ag I said agitate, agitate, agitate. It's probably, it's probably agate. Agate, amethyst, calcite, quartz, dr druzy, druzy quartz, which looks beautiful, and scepter quartz. And there you go. And of course on the back you also have a how to open geodes. So we had one here, but there's also one on the back here. But that's for when you actually get into the video of how I broke open this geode right here. So without further ado, let's get into how I broke this. And now we're gonna get into this. So it says you always wanna wear safety goggles and we have ours right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on, even though we're not breaking anything just yet, I still want to have them on. So there are many different ways to open a geo, but no matter how you do it, be patient. If you want the geo to break into large pieces, don't just hit it as hard as you can with a hammer because geos are often hollow. You will usually be left with a bunch of little pieces if you do this, not two halves. So even though you can see mine is not exactly a half, it's still not a bunch of little pieces. It's still pretty intact. And like it says, it is hollow. That's how geodes are. There is a certain kind, which it does specify in here, where geodes aren't hollow, but those aren't called geodes. So be aware of that. So we have the hammer and chisel method. To open a geo with the hammer and chisel, score the geo all the way around the circumference, like, uh, like oh, a, um, all the way around a circumference line, like the equator, with a flat face chisel. So that's why I said you may need these. I did use them, but it didn't really make too much of a difference. So that's why I said you may or may not need them. And I don't think those are our proper chisels anyway. So if you actually have a chisel, good for you. If you don't, then you'll see how to do it without that. Uh, be very careful not to strike the chisel too hard with a hammer. Continue this process until you see a crack develop in the geode, and then follow the crack around the geode until it opens. Hit lightly at first and then strike down harder until it opens. If you don't have a chisel, a hammer alone will work, although it is not as precise, which is true. That's why mine didn't break in half. It broke into these separate parts over here. And then you have a sock method. Since younger children often have trouble tapping lightly, this is a good method to use to keep pieces from flying up flying and potentially hitting someone. Place the geo in a sock and hit it very lightly with the hammer. Because you are cushioning the geo, your chances of two halves, two neat halves are not as great with the hammer chisel method, but it is still possible. So there we go, then we have the other languages that you can read it in as well. So we also have this magnifying glass and inside here would be the, what do you call it, displays, but I took them out. And I actually have not opened this yet even though I do have tons of other magnifying glasses. So we won't necessarily use this right away. And maybe in another video, I'll actually take it and put it under the microscope so we can see the crystals up close. Especially like this little piece right here is perfect for that. Oop, dropped it. It's okay, it's really tough though. And it's really nice. I would wish I could make it into a necklace of some sort or maybe a bracelet. Not necessarily a ring of nine rings, but cause it's just really pretty. So you might say, oh, you could just go get actual jewelry, but I'm not into jewelry. I actually just want to wear the actual rock. Unrefined, all the crystals are growing on it and everything. Now, like I said, this is gonna be messy, so that's why I have the towel down, and I have a lot. So we're gonna pick one, 
and we're gonna see. So hopefully I'm gonna crack four or five on camera. And like I said, after the first one or so, I'm gonna speed it up. And then I plan to live stream the other ones just so you can see how long it'll take. So I plan to show you, you know, my methods of doing it and then speed it up. And then I'll probably live stream it another time just so you can see how long it, long it is. But please be warned, it is gonna be really loud. So this is a headphone warning right here because it's, it's about to get loud in here. All right, so. You can take one of your chisels or one of these. I'm not sure these are, if these are chisels or not, but it's from past kits and these are quite heavy. They're not like the wooden stakes you usually get. Oh, this is nice too. This won't work because it's wood, but yeah. So it's not one of these. These are nice and metal. You can see this, this is wood, this is metal. This is also metal. It's, it has a little weight to it. And I do have a brush right here that I may use to kind of dust off some of the parts. You don't use this a whole lot, it's not necessary. But let's go ahead and get into it. So I wanna make sure this is semi-flat, so place it on its flat side. And I wanna say this is maybe the center. So I'm gonna take my hammer and be careful because if you miss, you will hit your finger, so please be careful. That's why I said you may need an adult to help you with this. And you just start hitting. is I was just kind of hitting it, hitting it that way, which does give more of a line and I feel it does, has more of an impact on it. You can see that line's becoming a little more dominant right there. And so I'm gonna turn it a little bit and this is not as flat either, so I may have to hold it, but keep your fingers away from the either the hammer head or the back of it, just keep them away and be safe. Also make sure you do not place your finger underneath the geode because once you hit it, you're gonna squish the geode against your finger which will cause problems and you're gonna, it's gonna hurt. So just make sure that your finger is not only just away from the hammer and where you're hitting, but it's also not underneath the geode.
All right, so that was unexpected. It just broke open. <laughs> So when you're all watching this, it won't be that long, but I've been at this for 57 minutes. <laughs> I've been at this thing for 57 minutes right now. So that's crazy. So that was actually different from my last geode. So my last geode, I had a hole, a small, not, not this kind of hole. I had a much smaller hole. So I had like a small little hole and I took the back of my hammer and just kind of like chipped at it to make the hole bigger until I kind of made it wide enough to where I could hit it to where it broke open. This one, I didn't see a line forming whatsoever and then all of a sudden I hit it and just boop, split right open. And I'm really happy. I'm really happy with this one because it is pretty much even. It's, it's pretty much in half right now. And if you can see when me shaking it sometimes, it's because some of the crystals do get loose while you're breaking it. So I'm just trying to get them all out. But look at that. <laughs> look at that. See the other one, I had broken a hole like a little bit right here, made it bigger, you can kind of see that. And I chipped off a small piece. You can see how small it is compared to the other one. So. Yeah, let's see if I can put this back on to how it originally looked. Probably won't be able to because I'm missing pieces. But... Yeah. So it, it, it wasn't exactly like this, but it was something like that, right? Not exactly because I can't for life me figure out how to put it back on correctly. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it was basically like this. And this is where the hole had formed. So I started a little pit here and I started chipping it away, chipping it away, chipping it away, excuse me, until the hole got like this big and this part just came right off. So I really just knocked the top off of this thing. So, but yeah, so I still have, I could technically hit this and break it open even more, but I kind of want to leave it. It looks kind of cool. Even my dad agrees. But this one is more in half, which is really nice. And you can't see here, but there is a bunch of, so I can put it in my hand. There's a bunch of little crystals that came out. Let me see if I can get them in my hand. Here we go. All right, so. There's a bunch of little crystals here, which is amazing. And I will be putting these under my microscope. That'll be a different video though. So I'm just gonna put these, I need like a little bag to put these things in. But I'm just gonna put them up here for now. There we go. Yeah, I got plenty of those. But yeah, that was awesome. So like I said, it took me about 57 minutes to get this open. Now, maybe it wouldn't take so long had I applied more force, but I wanna be gentle with it. I don't wanna accidentally hit my hand or anything. Plus, my wrist was starting to get a little tired, but that's awesome. Let's see if I can get you all a close-up shot. I'm gonna have to stand for this so I can see what I'm, look what I'm showing you all. Focus, focus, focus. So the camera's not gonna really focus on it, sadly. Focus, camera. Yeah, it's not gonna autofocus. Focus, I'm trying. Yeah, I will be posting pictures on my Twitter and on my blog, and I will be sure to insert pictures in here since it will not focus on this. I was really hoping it would, I'm just gonna try again. Yeah, will not focus. I was hoping it would. So this is the other piece, and look look at that. It's amazing. And there's some little crystals behind here. And if you look at this one, you can see all the crystals inside. You kinda can, you kinda can't, because the camera will not focus. Behave, camera, come on. But yeah, this is pretty awesome. Now this is also, these are also white crystals. You can get different colored ones, but I'm not sure if I have those in this kit. Not entirely sure. This was the same color rock as the other one. So maybe this color rock makes white crystals. Maybe the other colors will make different kinds. I do have some red looking rocks, so that'll be next. And I did say the goal was to break for them on camera, but I didn't think it would take this long. 
So because of that, I'm just gonna do separate videos. We might see for a while here a, whoops, sorry, hit the camera. There might be a geode a month since I have two broken up now. I have eight more to go. So I could just do a geode once a month. Let me know in the comments below if you would like a geode a month or if you would rather see them all this month or like a couple this month, couple next month so I can get more kits to do that. Just depends. But yeah, there we go. Very pretty, very amazing. Like I said, I will insert pictures since the camera won't focus on it, but looks pretty great. Now, one thing I do want to discuss because I kind of got to mention is I did say put a towel down on paper or newspaper. So once one thing I didn't notice is that if you saw me adjusting my towel, that's because the towel has actually got a hole in it now from the geode rubbing or the rock really sometimes. Uh, it was rubbing against the towel and it was creating a hole. Even right now, there is now a hole here. So there is a hole, oops, I just put a bunch of geodes Yo, crystals on the floor. Oh, goodness. Gonna need a vacuum. <laughs> Jimmy, get the vacuum. J Jimmy, I need you to get the vacuum. Anyway, so, yeah, so there's a hole here, but there's also a hole underneath, and my desk is right underneath that. I do have some mess to clean up. Let me see if I can show you. I'm just gonna move these geodes. So one thing I didn't mention was that this towel is old. If you do use a towel, don't use one of your really nice, fluffy, and soft towels. Use one of your old raggedy towels because I literally just put a hole in both sides of this towel. And keep in mind, this towel has gone through a beating because I did an a archeological dig, technically as I'm filming this two days ago, but when you're watching this, it, may, it might be released differently. But yeah, so let me see if I can show, let me just do it this way. So yeah, and I see why the towel down. It, it may not visibly, have dust, like an archaeological dig, but there is dust, so I have to clean this up now. And let's see, you can see where the hole was. Hole is The hole is right here. I don't know if you can see that very well. So it was literally pushing dust all over. So, and then there's a hole right here. And you can kind of see where I was, I almost had a hole here and I made a hole right here as well. So please, please, please use your old towels that you have no, that has no sentimental value. It's not new, it's not fluffy, it's not soft. Use something else. And now that I've done this, see the other one, the other time I did the geode, this didn't happen. So I don't know if I was being a lot, a lot more harsh on the rock this time or whatever it was, but I really don't recommend using a, a newspaper now. Not just because a lot of people don't even have newspapers anymore, but because new pa newspapers tear easily, and I feel like it would tear a lot easier than this towel did. Yes, the towel did tear, but if I did this on a newspaper for almost an hour, I feel like it would be in shreds right now. So please be careful with that. And then of course, if you are doing this, don't do it on a precious desk. So don't do it on your parents' desk if they do work on there. For example, I may have some scruff marks on my desk now because I was hitting the rock against it. Yes, there was cushion because there was a towel. That's another reason I was recommend a towel is because it has cushion. So it kind of cushioned the pounding from my desk just a little bit. Of course, when the towel thinned out and made a hole, it doesn't cushion anymore, but still. But definitely do this on a surface you don't really care about. It's okay if it has some dents in it, maybe some scruff marks and you're okay with getting dust on it. This will come off easily. I'm sure I just need to wipe it down, get a vacuum, then wipe it down. But yeah. So maybe not your dining room table. Now this desk was my dad's, but that was several years ago. He has a new desk now. He's had it for several years. This is a really old desk that I was like, hey, I, I want it. So I'm okay if this desk does have some scruff marks. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a dent right here. So see, this is what I'm talking about. So there are several dents in this desk now, but this desk is meant for science. So while dents weren't expected at the time I had got this desk from my dad, it wasn't expected it might get a little messy. So I'm kind of just pushing the dust so you can see the, the carnage. But yeah, I can't. you can't tell because it looks like dust right here, but that's a dent. Right here where my thumb is, that's a dent. These are little scruff marks, possibly other dents as well. So yeah, so please be careful where you do this. 
not just at the time of day and be mindful of your neighbors, but just be careful of the, uh, the towel you may be using or the desk or table you're doing this on. Please be mindful of that because you may get dense. Now, maybe next time I will double up the towel so it have more protection because I only, only wrapped it over itself once sometimes. So there really wasn't that much protection. So next time I'll do it more than once. But yeah, look at all that dust. Look at that. I know this is kind of insult to injury. I'm just, you know, sprinkling it on the desk, but it's already ruined. It's okay. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it though. I'm just gonna uh, push this back down for now so I can put the geodes up here. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this. Like I said, I might be doing a geode a month since I have eight more to go. But if you do have some other geodes from different companies, besides Natural Geographic, that you think would be amazing for me to do, make a video on, please leave a link in the comments below. And if I don't have, if you can't post a link, then just tell me the name and if I can find it on Amazon or maybe in Barnes and Nobles or things like that. And if it's not geode related, but it's a science experiment, let me know. I definitely want to see. Look at that. That's amazing. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed.